What about if you were that? that just undercoat or what? Um, it's just house, house paint undercoat, yeah. yeah. Okay, to do this for this side, uh, size I need uh, 600 mils of resin or 300 of resin and two, 300 of hardener. It's a 50 50 mix. And where do you get that from? Um, different places. This one's Solid Solutions in Melbourne, but I use I do use different ones. Uh, no way in Brisbane. Time. There is one in Brisbane called Barnes, and they have an excellent resin as well. Oh, okay. They're in West End. Right they on. have one called Epoxy Glass, and it's, it, I've used that as well. Yeah. And it's also a very good resin. So it's 50 50 mix? Sorry? Yeah. So it's a 50 50 mix. Yeah, that's um, 300 mils of resin and 300 mils of hardener yeah. and now that I've mixed the two together I've got I've got to stir it for two minutes. Can someone time me for two minutes please? <laughs> You're videoing down the ground now. <laughs> the colours, yeah the colours I'm going to use. And what sort of paint is it? Um, some of it is, uh, mostly I, I use um, um, pigments that are specially made for resin. You can use acrylic paint as well though. Um, any acrylic paint will work. Just that I prefer to use the ones that are specially made for resin. Some of this liquid is some of powder. Uh, that'll be about two okay. minutes. All right. So that's um, in about two minutes. So. Yep. Yeah, I'll see you next weekend. Oh, Monday. See you Monday. Okay. So now I'm going to mix my colours in. This one's called Sunflower. It's a beautiful colour. And you don't need a lot of colour. It's, a, it's a ten, about a ten, five to ten percent colour to resin. So that's, you just need a little bit. So a little bit goes a long way. And you put that in and then you mix it up. That's one colour. Um, next I'll use, this one's called Burnt Umber. It's a lovely chocolate colour. So I just dip, dip my popsicle stick in, mix it up, lovely colour, that's a Barnes one, that's the company in West End, mm -hmm. and it's burnt umber and it's a beautiful chocolate colour. And um, next I'm going to, this is a powder pigment, it's um, iridescent red copper, it's a language, which is a Melbourne company. They make a lot of pigments, and this one's powder. And I'm going to put the powder. You need to put a little bit more in, so I'm going to put that much in. I'm also going to put a bit of this is called white sparkle powder in that. It's, in pro, it's fairly way. iridescent anyway. See how it um, disperses. When I do it at home, I do it under an extraction pan, so I don't breathe it in. So that, this is a gorgeous colour too. Powders you need to mix a little bit more because um, if you don't mix it in properly you might have a little lump in it. Gorgeous colour. It is beautiful isn't it? Look at that. Gorgeous isn't it? And next I'm going, this one's an ir iridescent um, gold and uh, when I bought this I promptly dropped it on the floor and broke the lid. Oh. And probably got cat hair in it as well. <coughs> um, but it's a beautiful colour but um, the lid can't be used so I just keep the plastic on it. <laughs> that's a language colour as well. Was that powder? That's, that's yeah. powder, yeah. Um, and that's a Melbourne company. Mm -hmm. So what do you call them? Epoxy paints? It's epoxy resin. Epoxy and resin. And there's a, a, just pigments there. Pigments different. For yeah, some, you can use powder pigments, you can use um, pastes, and you can use inks, special inks for... Um, that's, that's an ink, I'm not using that one at the moment, but that's an ink, it's called a 
a transparent epoxy resin dye. And you can mix it with the paint? Yes, paint. yep. So this is going to be fairly um, like an iridescent sort of one. Look at that gold. Yeah, Isn't that a beautiful yeah. colour? It's fairly hot, so I suppose it'll set fast. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, a resin does set faster when it's hot. Usually you have about 40 minutes working time, so I don't oh. know how much I'll have. This is also another powder one. This is a metal pigment powder, copper. Yeah. And so Every 10 degrees will double the reaction time of any chemistry. So <laughs> it'll be setting twice as fast as it's Lucky we've got a house hot. scientist here that knows yes, all these things. Good, <laughs> I, can, I, note, I note the sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> he tells tell me all these things. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm and, very then, lucky. and then I say, you needed to know that. Of course. So where do we get one of you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't have him, he's mine. <laughs> Everyone always says that. <laughs> so that's, um, that's copper. And uh, I'm going to mix white here. And I, use, I like... Um, there's two whites that I find are really good for doing getting lacing and one of them is this Solid Solutions white pigment paste. So about about that much. The other good one is um, an Art Tree Creations one called Iceland White. That's also an excellent um, white for getting lacing. <coughs> so in what, what way do you use these? Um, as a gesso or is it jewellery? No, lacing? I don't. I, I, I have it as a, like a wall hanging or a table. Oh, so I've got a few tables in there yeah. and I've got some paintings upstairs in the exhibition upstairs. I've got six. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the white mixed. So I'll just um, give this a bit of a wipe down where the, where the powder pigments are. I'm not going to worry about the, where the resin is because I'm going to be covering it with resin anyway. Uh, so, okay. I'll start with um, I'll start with the brown. I usually start with a darker colour. You don't have to. There's no there's no set way of starting. You know you can. Um, this is vinyl, so it's really good thing to work on. So you pour it on, and you can you can pour it on in any any fashion that you want. So have you got any plan in mind, or you're just going? No, I'm just um, being spontaneous. You can work with a plan, but it, because it's a fluid medium, you probably won't get exactly what you want, but you can get an approximate idea. You know. so I'll just leave that there to drain a bit. Um, next I'll do this one. Give it another bit of a stir before I... It's starting to get warm. Um, I can feel it in my hand, it's starting to, to get to warm up. It, it sort of warms up when as it's curing. <clears throat> once, when once it cures, it also shrinks, which is not a problem with a round thing. But if you paint a rectangle that's sufficiently long, it'll turn it into a banana. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> in that case, with a rectangle, you need to brace it before you paint. Brace the back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a bit of yellow next. Looks <clears throat> like it might be a bit of a dial Dale Frank. Oh right. Yeah, ah. you know him? Oh, I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't actually oh, seen. I've seen so pictures of his he work. Just does with, um, yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just being very random <laughs> with, with it. And um, this one's. Uh, I'll do the copper. I usually do my white and my gold at last, although this one's got a few iridescent colours anyway. So. And how long does it take to Um it, It's... It's sort of touch dry in eight hours, but, but you really wouldn't handle it much for uh, 24 hours, then you can move it. But um, if you were ever sending it somewhere, you would, you'd leave it for three or four days so that it hardens up a bit more. And that would be temperature dependent. So Gail does all her stuff in an air conditioned studio. Yeah, but no, I don't use Crank it, up the temperature a bit and it's all faster. 
I don't usually do it outside. You needed to know that. Yes, yeah, so of course we did. <laughs> Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> so next I'm going to do the white. I like to do the white last because the, the white is the one that um, gives you the lacing, that beautiful lacing. Oh, uh, then the other colours lace a bit, but the white in particular. So now I'm going to tilt the board. I think it's wonderful if you tilt it or spun it around. You, you tilt it to, because oh, I want the, 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 the resin to flow over the sides. The board has been routed so that the corner, it's not a sharp corner at the edge. Uh -huh. It's rounded so that it flows over easily. Do you do the boards for him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. I get bunny. You're very lucky. I know. That's why I'm keeping him. <laughs> Hope he keeps me. <laughs> you get bunnings, what? Right? You said I get bunnings and then you stop. Yeah, bunnings. I get bunnings to cut it into squares or rectangles, and John takes it up to his brother's place, who's got a fabulous workshop and lots of tools. And um, he has them in the rounds. But if you if you need if you ever do this at home, and you haven't lucky haven't aren't lucky enough to have a husband or a friend that will um, cut the circles for you, unless you can do it yourself. Some people can do it themselves. Um, go to the men's shed. The men's shed are really wonderful for doing things like that. So now I'm going to torch it. Hope it works. It's working this morning. <laughs> so that one or this one? No, this one. Okay. So first of all, I'll um, I just I just do this all over. This pops the bubbles, and it also helps with the lacing. I, and one thing I should have done is um, bring a level with me and level it off. Um, because if you have it, if it's not level. All your paint will, all your paint will get off the sides. <laughs> but um, to assist with the, the lacing, if you if you tilt the board while you're doing this, and don't leave it in one spot for too long, because you don't want to burn the resin. a really big board it's a good idea to have someone to help you with the tilting. Mm. So now I'll just keep um, doing this for a while and you'll see more lacing developing. How's it going when it's like dripping, up, dripping over? One of the things of doing it outside is you get more bugs and things like that. I normally do it inside at home, as John just said before, because um, you, you don't you don't want to get suicidal flies or things or bees in it because they will die if they fly into it. lacing as much as it usually does it's possibly because of the heat but also because um because at home i also use um, a hairdryer oh, first um a hairdryer or a heat gun first and, and blow it around a bit but it's it's enough so you use the hairdryer before blow um you can use yes oh. um yeah i'm just getting on some on the, on the ground here i might have to Shorten this up a little bit. Uh, this bit. It hasn't quite tilted the sides on this side. Yeah, that's yeah. This side. It probably must be tilted yeah. towards this spot here, Car. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, that's right. Well, this is um, trying to help them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is quite pretty what it's done. Yeah, yeah isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Can go off Can and keep those hold bits. That up for me? <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be them. great. Yeah. Um, as I said, I should have really need, brought my um, oh, spirit right. level and oh, right. leveled it off first. Okay. Um, the table. Make sure that the board's oh, completely level. And the level. table, really. Oh, yeah, I'll isn't see. it beautiful? Yeah, so here. It's all flowing towards you, dear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's really pretty. Yeah. Now, and I also make sure all the sides are covered. Yeah, so, is there any parts that are Yes, around here or? and around here. Okay. So, so I'll I'll turn sorry. it around, it might tip down this side. I'll do that. As I said, it's easy to do at home in my, yeah, in my of studio, of course. <laughs> but, Spot there. So is that all covered now? No, no, it's really good. No. Is that your job, John? <laughs> <laughs> That's done now, isn't it, I yeah. think? Okay, and I'll uh, I'll just give it a final bit of. I'll take one. I have two pair of gloves on for this reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can whip one. Did you want to disconnect and put the hair dryer? On? Uh, no, don't worry. No, no okay. it's fine. If I want more, I'll just put another layer on. But I, I don't mind it like that. You don't have to have lacing. A lot of lacing. I can get a bit more anyway by doing this. I think it's quite pretty, don't you think? Yeah. Mm. I haven't used these colours before. I was just going to ask you, were they? Were My... you working out beforehand? Yeah, I usually do. Work? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I just pick random colours. Well, yeah. Quite often, I do um, teal and um, and blues, yeah, and blues and greens. Because that's downstairs here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah like that. That's, that's my favourite colour. But I decided I wanted some different colours today. And I actually had a workshop this morning in the Gold Coast, and I had two students, and one of them used these colours. And I thought, oh, they look good. <laughs> so I hope she doesn't mind that I use the colours <laughs> that she used, which I helped to pick, by the way. <laughs> and they're my colours anyway. <laughs> but I'm sure she won't mind. But doesn't that look pretty? Look, look at all that. It is, isn't it? So that's why if you keep doing this, it helps when you, you when you tilt it a little bit when you when you're doing the torching. If you did exactly the same thing in a really cool air conditioned room, it, you'd actually get different effects. Yeah, like different you can sort of do the same technique twice, but at really different temperatures, mm -hmm. you will get different results. And there's some resin that's thicker or slower. Yeah, some of them are thicker. On yeah. the, just the, dal the, resin. the dal chem um, from Art Tree Creations is thicker. And you've got 30 minutes working time with that. About um, I, I've used it, but I I like the one I like them a bit more runny. But some people prefer to, the thicker the thicker resin. But Dalchem is a beautiful resin, by the way. It's um it's very very shiny, really a lovely resin. But they're all nice. They were you know just you find which ones suit you best. At the moment, um, 